Yo, Snapchat, let's discuss Telepresence Robots and Edward Snowden. Let's do this. How cool is that view? Whoa. So I came across an article this morning talking about how Edward Snowden is surprisingly free for a, a you know, international fugitive <laughs> who's being chased by the FBI and the US government and all these so Edward Snowden is the badass cyberpunk that a few years ago worked for the NSA um, and leaked millions and millions of documents that exposed uh, the US government and NSA's mass surveillance of their population. But you already know this. But what's cool is he's been, um, he still hasn't been caught, which is awesome. He's living in an undisclosed location in Russia, and then he's still going to all these conferences and giving all these talks around the world. He started off doing Skype interviews, you know, routing through Tor so no one can track his location. Um, but over the last year or so, maybe last few years, he's been using telepresence robots to go to conferences. And I remember when I first saw a video of him rolling out as a robot on stage, I was like, oh yeah, cool gimmick, haha. Edward Snowden's a robot, you know, he's giving the finger to the government, fuck you. Um, but it's actually way deeper than that, it's, and I didn't realize it's Because now he's not just doing the occasional uh, media conference or the occasional talk, he actually, he actually has a massive schedule. Um, so this article was talking about how his robot body has been transported around Manhattan. Like literally he has his PR managers and his lawyers carting his robot body in the back of the car around to all these different conferences around like New York and different cities. And that's a bizarre world. So through technology and telepresence robots, despite being one of the most wanted future deers in the world, he still has massive freedom and autonomy to travel around in the US giving talks and speeches. And I don't know, there's something about that that really brings these telepresence robots out of the gimmick kind of bucket and into the like, holy shit, that's like actual like surrogate, you know, utilizing robotic body. And it's also another example of technology degrading and diminishing the power of the nation state and its uh, tendency to use violence to control the masses. Like fucking crypto anarchy, decentralize all the things. Whoa. And like I'm sure Snowden's life sucks because he's hiding out in, a, in an undisclosed place in Moscow. Um, but at least it allows him to spread his message and you know not be sitting in a cell in the US. So anyway, that got me thinking more about telepresence robots and working out where they're going to next, um, beyond the gimmick stage to more practical value add stage where it makes sense to use a telepresence robot over Skype. So at the moment these telepresence robots are really expensive, they're a couple of grand, and essentially all they are is an iPad on a stick on a Segway that just auto balances and you can control remotely. And you're pretty much just working with a 2D camera and a 2D screen, which isn't ideal. So the next version of that would obviously be v uh, VR, a 360 degree VR. So imagine you just throw a 360 degree camera on top of that robot um, and then Snowden can actually sit there with a full VR headset and look around in 360 degrees and see everything. That'd be awesome. Obviously then you wouldn't be able to see his face because it'd be covered with a massive visor. Um, so maybe you'd have to have an avatar. And whether you make that a cartoon avatar or a more ris realistic avatar, like yeah, I'm not sure. I wonder if at some point you'd have an anatomically correct robotic head sitting on, on top of that stick instead of the, uh, the iPad it currently has. Um, and would that be creepy? Yes. But the next step obviously is having like robotic arms and, and the ability to kind of reach out and grab things and shake people's hands and stuff like that. I'm not sure how practical that one is or whether that's just a pure gimmick. Uh, one of the ideas I've often talked about is having quadrocopters or drones in all the tourist locations around the world and you'd almost be able to rent them so you could like put on your VR headset and just like fly a drone. So the example would be that you pay five, ten bucks on this website, you um, you put on your, your Oculus, your, your VR headset um, and you basically pick the location you want to go to. So say, let's say Paris. So on this website you'd be able to select the like a predefined tourist tour um, or you'd be able to draw on a map where you want the drone to go. So let's say you pick the Eiffel Tower tour and you pay your ten dollars you throw on your VR headset, um, it books a, a slot to use that drone, and the drone literally flies up and does the tour and, and feed, feeds you a real like 1080p real-time stream. That would kind of become like telepresence tourism or like teletourism. I'm sure they'll call it that. It's a shitty name. Teletourism. Welcome. But so there's a business idea for you, whoever's watching. Go do that. Um, because that'll be a big business. Um, it's way cheaper than getting a, a booking a flight, and yet you're getting almost like a little bit of a taste of, of travel for really cheap. Um, you can next level that again and actually have uh, people with cameras strapped to their heads and they basically do the same thing. They work for this platform, you tell them the route you want them to go and they just go and film it. So you basically be like controlling a person. So say, say you want to do the, um, the, the Paris tour again, you'd get, you'd get to pick a person, you book in the slot and then you tell them where to go and they film it. You, it's like booking a surrogate person, you get to be inside that person's eyes for however long you pay for. <laughs> Which is much cheaper than, you know, it's, it's more realistic and feasible than a robot, we can do it now. And people would want to work for this company, that's like being the ultimate tour guide. You get to basically just spend your day traveling around to all these different locations, um, showing people really cool stuff, talking to them in real time and showing them what you Shit man, you can decentralize this, uh, Uber for tourism, <laughs> of course, um, where people can just sign up to become one of these, one of these uh, tele-tourists, uh, tele-tourist guides. What would you need to do that? Like, 
possibly just so the the gear 360 like all these 360 degree cameras are coming out now they're about 300 dollars but they're going to be like 100 dollars probably by the end of the year or by next year so maybe you have just a, like a 360 degree camera that's paired up to a phone with enough battery and obviously like 4g access and you're just streaming the footage um yeah and to save on bandwidth and if you can get the latency down you don't have to be streaming the full 360 degree view you only have to stream where the the person with the vr headset is looking you only have to stream that section of video now imagine this in like really crazy locations. I noticed actually um, in one of the Snapchat story sections, you know how they have like those branded things? Um, they were showing Snapchats from these guys climbing Everest. So wouldn't it be cool if like one of those Everest climbers actually had a 360 degree camera kind of mounted on their head um, and anyone could be looking in and seeing everything in 360 degrees as they're climbing in real time. It's often been said that VR is gonna be a transcendent medium for sharing stories and empathizing with other individuals. Uh, so one example is like, you know, you get to step into the eyes of a refugee in a refugee camp and under but those experiences are often going to be curated, uh, edited, and scripted, uh, you know, in short little five, ten minute bursts, like like a, like a movie. Wouldn't it be better if it was real time and real? These live video platforms like Facebook Live at scale are actually helping spread compassion and empathy throughout the entire human species. Um, you know, by stepping into each other's shoes, we actually understand each other much more and don't fight. Like, I just think that would be amazing when we have the platforms to be able to step into someone's mind, you know, merge eyes with some other human being on the planet, and understand and see their world in full 360 degree real time view. I think it creates shared realities and like a global compassion and empathy um, and it kind of just like a collective consciousness that you know shows that we're all the same, we're all human and I think that's a positive thing for the future. So step into my eyes, experience my reality, have a look around and let me know what you think. Our future. Catch you guys. Catch